Hey friends, and welcome to another abridged gameplay. Today's game lasted three hours, and this abridged version shrinks it down to under half an hour, so you can enjoy a full game of magic in the span of a TV episode instead of a movie. As you can imagine, editing these games takes a lot of hours, so if you like this sort of content and want to see more of it, consider liking and subscribing to make Scoops a happy little goldfish. Now let's check out what everyone's bringing today. Phil aka Brewer's Kitchen has brought Lord Windgrace, a Jun Landfall deck aka Lands Go Burr. Goldfish editor Neotic is bringing Intet the Dreamer, a teamer spellslinger deck that's all about casting huge flashy spells for free. Sounds pretty cool, let's see how it pans out. Richard is bringing the partners Anara, Wolved Familiar, and Arden, Intrepid Archaeologist, a Selesnya equipment deck, probably as an excuse to run Dowsing Dagger in yet another deck. Finally, I'm bringing Toshiro Umazawa, a mono black spellslinger deck that's all about casting instants and then murdering things to give my instant pseudo flashback. Now that we've introduced the players, let's hop into the game. Richard, Phil, and I keep seven cards, while Nyota keeps six. I win a die roll and kick things off by playing a Baron Moor. Phil and Nyotic also play a tap land for their first turns, but Richard pulls ahead by enchanting his turn one forest with a wild growth. I play a swamp and get some ramp of my own by casting a thought vessel and pass. Phil plays an arid mesa and passes. Nyotic plays a stomping ground tapped and passes. Richard keeps his green ramp train chugging along by casting Sakura Tribelder aka Steve and plays Thornglint Bridge before passing. I play a Tectonic Edge and then cast a Saddus Cryptgast, seeing as I only have a single swamp at the moment. At end step, Phil cracks Arid Mesa, fetching a Blood Crypt before I pass to him. Then on his turn, he plays a Forest and passes. Neotic plays a Command Tower, then casts Fertile Footsteps, ramping out an island while Beanstalk Giant goes on a fun little adventure in the Exile Zone, then passes. Richard plays a Tyrite Sanctum, then casts a Guard Aid, letting him flash equip any of his equipment. Then he casts Finhorn Elves and a Mask of Memory, equipping it to Steve and hitting Neotic with it, drawing two cards and discarding Black Blade of Forge before passing. On my turn, I play the Saddest Cabal Coffers, still with only one Swamp in play. Then I smack Richard with the Cryptcast and cast Ashiro Umazawa with Extort for some tasty life drain. At end step, Phil casts Hero, sacrificing a forest to ramp out another forest and a snow-covered forest, obviously setting up for a future Field of the Dead. On Phil's turn, he plays Keswick Wolf Run, then casts Standard All-Star Renin 7 using its Nega 3 ability to make a 5-5 Tree Folk with Reach and passes. Neotic plays an island, cast Jin of Wishes, and passes. Richard swings the Masked Steve at me, taunting me to block with Toshiro. I fear a flash equipment though, so I let Steve through. Before damage, Richard flashes an Inquisitor's Flail, equipping it to Steve, doubling its damage from 1 to a whopping 2, then draws 2 cards and discards Avison's Pilgrim off the Mask. He then plays Virgin Catacombs and passes. On my turn, I play a Swamp and cast Entomb, tutoring Succumb to Temptation into my graveyard. Then I cast Bonus Hunger, forcing everyone else to sacrifice a creature, which triggers Toshiro and lets me flashback succumb to Temptation to draw two cards and lose two life. Now that Phil has no blockers, I take out Renin 7 with Cryptcast before passing. Phil casts Escape to the Wilds, exiling the top five cards of his library and letting him play them until the end of his next turn and lets him play an extra land this turn. Phil then casts Soul Ring from Exile, plays and cracks a Wooded Foothills to fetch Cinderglade, then casts Lotus Cobra from Exile, and then passes. Nyota casts Bloodbraid Elf, rolling the dice on a good cascade. He gets a free Cultivate off it, ramping out a forest and putting a mountain in hand. Then he plays a Scalding Tarn and smacks Phil with the Elf and suspends Ancestral Visions. On end step, Richard cracks his Catacombs for a Canopy Vista before Neotic passes. Richard swings the Masked Flailing Steve at Neotic, drawing two cards and discarding. Then he plays Overgrown Farmland, casts Stone Hewer Giant, and passes, dreaming of some sweet equipments to tutor in the future. On my turn, I play a Swamp and cast Infernal Darkness to take out the Giant and trigger Toshi, flashing back in Tomb and tutoring a Dark Bargain into my graveyard. I then smack Richard with Cryptgast before passing. Phil casts Oracle of Moldiah from Exile, revealing an Arcane Signet on top of his library. He then plays Lotus Field, sacrificing two forests and making a mana off Lotus Cobra. He then casts Multani, Yavamaya's Avatar from Exile, which is already an 11-11 Chonky Tree Boy. Then he smacks Neotic with the Cobra before passing. 
Neona casts Throes of Chaos, cascading into Is It Chemister. He then plays a mountain and passes. Richard smacks me with the masked flailing Steve, drawing two cards and discarding Soul Ring. He then plays a Brushland and casts Pure Steel Paladin, and then casts Seven's Reclamation to return Blackblade Reforged from the graveyard to the battlefield, drawing a card off the Paladin and turning on its Metalcraft ability, letting him equip all his equipment for zero, moving it to the Paladin before passing. I play a Swamp and cast Cling to Dust, exiling Seven's Reclamation and drawing a card. Then I float a bunch of mana and cast Mutilate. Richard responds by cracking Steve to ramp out a forest, and Yetta cracks the Chemister for nothing. Mutilate then resolves, killing everything but the Multani and the Paladin and triggering Toshi, letting me flashback Phonus Hunger to kill the remaining two creatures. Then I cast Thrilling Encore, returning all the creatures that died this turn to my side of the battlefield, except for Toshi since I put him back into the command zone to play around a possible counterspell blowout from Neotic. Now I have a bunch of friends on my side of the battlefield. Hooray. I crack Steve to ramp out a Swamp, and then smack Phil with the Chemister and Neotic with the Elf before passing. Phil casts Arcane Signet, Corsair Crucifix, and ramming up Excavator playing an Arid Mesa from his graveyard with the Excavator and gaining a life off the Corsair. End step Nieta cracks Scalding Tarn to fetch a Breeding Pool. On his turn, he casts Simic Signet and Intet the Dreamer, then passes. Richard casts Arden, Intrepid Archaeologist, and uses Arden's Combat Trigger to move all his equipment onto his commander before passing. I play a Swamp, making a mana off the Lotus Cobra. I cast Malicious Affliction, targeting Arden and Drain with Extort. Richard responds by casting Teferi's Protection, phasing him out until his next turn, which is rude because I wanted to trigger Toshiro. It turns out it didn't matter because I goofed and forgot to recast my commander anyway. Oops a daisy. So I then do that and extort again. Then I swing the Bloodbraid Elf at Phil, not realizing that the Corsair has a big booty, and the Corsair blocks and kills the Elf. I then shamefully pass a turn. Phil casts Rampaging Beloths then plays a Wooded Foothills from his graveyard with the Excavator, gaining a life off the Corsair and making a 4-4 Beast creature token off the Baloths. He then casts Lord Windgrace and minus 3s him to return two forests to the battlefield, gaining two more life and making two more beasts. He passes confidently now that his landfall deck is really popping off. Neotic starts his turn by smacking Phil with Intet, using Intet's combat trigger to exile and cast Izzet Signet off the top of his library. Then he casts Magus of the Mind and passes. Richard casts Steel Shaper's Gift and tutors up Loxodon Warhammer. Then he casts Inara to make his commanders indestructible on his turn and swings Arden at me. Since Arden can one-shot me with commander damage, I chump block with Multani, the Chemister, and the Paladin to mitigate as much damage as possible. Richard then flash equips in the Warhammer, taking out all blockers and gaining a cozy 28 life. On end step, I cast Rise of the Drayed Marn with Extort, making three zombie tokens, and Richard passes a turn. On my turn, I cast Professor Onyx and minus three her to make each opponent sacrifice their greatest power creature. Phil responds by cracking his Wooded Foothills and Arid Mesa to get an Overgrown Tomb and Sheltered Thicket, making two more beasts and gaining two more life. Then the Baloth, Intet, and Arden die, triggering Toshi three times. I use the first trigger to flashback Dark Bargain, looking at the top three cards of my library, putting two in hand and one into the graveyard, and draining everyone for two with Professor Onyx. The second trigger flashbacks Malicious Affliction, killing the Excavator and Anara, draining another two and giving me two more Toshi triggers. I Toshi flashback Dark Ritual, making three mana and draining another two. Then Toshi flashback Cremate to exile Multani from the graveyard and drain another two, but Phil responds by sacrificing two force to return it back to hand. Then I Toshi flashback Infernal Grasp to kill the Corsair and drain two and get yet another Toshi trigger. And then finally Toshi flashback Thrilling Encore to return all the creatures killed this turn back to my side of the battlefield, extorting and draining another two with Onyx. With my board full of stolen creatures, my life total at 60, and both Phil and Neotic close to dead from all my drain effects, I happily pass the turn. Unfortunately for me, Phil is a landfall deck, and his value train has no breaks. He starts by plus twoing Lord Windgrace, pitching a land to draw two cards. He casts Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, a chonky 9-9 that makes all his non-token creatures force, in addition to their other types. He follows up with Scoot Swarm, which triggers its own landfall ability when it enters the battlefield, since it's now a forest. He plays a snow-covered forest, making more Scoots, 
then Orcish Lumberjack, even more Scooty Scoots, then scoots it over to Neotic's turn. Finally, on turn 9, Neotic removes the final suspend counter to cast Ancestral Vision, drawing 3 cards. It's time for him to pop off as well. He starts by discarding a lane to cast Throws of Chaos with Retrace from his graveyard cascading into Shardless Agent, which has its own Cascade trigger. With the table now realizing the danger of Magus of the Mind, after all these spells are being cast, Phil responds by casting the flavorful Wind Grace's Judgment, destroying the Magus, locks it on Warhammer, and Professor Onyx. Neotic responds by cracking the Magus, exiling the top 5 cards of his library, and letting him cast them for free this turn. Wind Grace's Judgment resolves, destroying the Hammer and Onyx, and the Agent cascades into Is a Charm, drawing two cards, and then discarding two cards. Neata kicks things up a notch by casting Sunbird's Invocation. Bam. He then plays an Exiled Mountain, casts the Exiled Kagama's Reach for free, ramping a forest and putting one in hand, then casts the Exiled Volcanic Torrent for free, cascading into Baral, Chief of Compliance, and dealing 8 damage to all opposing creatures and planeswalkers, killing everything except for Ashaya. Then he casts Spell Twine, hitting a Factor Fiction off the Invocation, and gets to put Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty, Chaos Warp, and Valakut Awakening into his hand. Spelltwine casts Volcanic Torrent from his graveyard again, and Rise of the Dreg Marn for mine, cascading into Primal Amulet, killing Ashaya, and making 11 zombie tokens. After that sweet turn, Neotic then passes, all set up for an even better next turn. Richard is unfortunately running low on gas at this point, and just recasts Arden, equips everything to him, plays a Lotus Veil sacrificing two forests, and passes. I cast Expedition Map and immediately crack it to tutor and play Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, turning everyone's lands into happy little swamps. I then cast Promise of Power with Entwine, drawing 5 cards and making a 6-6 demon token with flying. I follow that up with Arcane Signet and Oathkeeper to Kino's Dice Show before passing. Phil recasts Lord Windgrace, casts Retreat to Hagra, and then finally Nylea's Intervention, where X equals 2, tutoring Field of the Dead and Vesuva to his hand. He then plays the Field of the Dead, making a zombie off the field, and drains for 1 with Retreat. Then he minus 3's Lord Windgrace, returning 2 fetch lands from the graveyard to the battlefield, and cracks them for 2 more shock lands, draining 4 more times, and making 4 more zombies in the process before passing. Nyada casts Mnemonic Deluge to cast Escape from the Wilds in Phil's graveyard 3 times. But first Sunburn's Invocation's trigger resolves, nabbing him Shark Typhoon. Then the Deluge resolves, and Nyada casts Escape to the Wild 3 times, exiling and letting him play the top 15 cards off the top of his library, and play 3 extra land drops this turn. He also makes 3 5 5 flying shark tokens off the Typhoon, and flips the Primal Amulet into Primal Wellspring. And now the insanity begins. He casts Mizix's Mastery with Overload, casting all the instants and sorceries from his graveyard for free drawing a billion extra cards, ramping, cascading, making tons of sharks, uses Song of the Dryad to turn my demon token into a forest so he'll leave him alone, and double chaos warps with the wellspring, removing my cabal coffers and turning Arden into a belt of giant strength. Richard tries to protect the Arden with heroic intervention, but Neotic counters it with supreme will. Then Neotic swings a bunch of stuff at me, chunking me down to 25. Thankfully, he doesn't have the mana to cast the Exiled Mind's Desire, or the sheer amount of spells would probably break MTGO, and definitely break my soul for having to edit all this. He mercifully stops doing things, passing with an insane board state that is all but guaranteed to win if he gets to untap again. Unfortunately for Richard, he's full out of gas. He recasts Inara, equips Blackblade Reforge to it, and plays his final card, an Ancient Tomb, before passing. Luckily for me, I have the answer to stop Nyutic, from adding another 30 minutes to my editing time. I cast Exsanguinate where X equals 8, enough to take him out if he doesn't have any free counter magic in hand. Thankfully, he does not, and dies, which removes the Song of the Dryads from the game, freeing my demon. I think about killing Phil with the demon, but that would put me dead to Richard's next attack, so I hold off and pass. Phil plays Vesuva, copying Field of the Dead, something I planned to blow up with Tectonic Edge, but then I forgot to do. My brain is definitely shutting down two and a half hours into this game. Phil plus two's Lord Windgrace to rummage, and I take that opportunity to tech edge one of his Field of the Deads. Phil then casts Timeless Witness, returning Windgrace's judgment to his hand from his graveyard, and recasts it, taking out my demon and Richard's poor Wolfie. He then casts Multani and passes. Richard recasts Arden, loads him up with equipment, and passes. 
I activate War Room to draw a card and lose one life, trying to find an answer to Phil's board state. I recast Toshiro, play Arcane Lighthouse, and pass. Phil plus two's Lord Windgrace to Rummage, cast Elvis Reclaimer, and plays a Golgari Rot Farm for another zombie and drain, and swings his team at Richard, pumping his army up with Keswick Wolfrun for lethal damage and putting poor Richard out of his misery. It's now a showdown between me and Phil. I pick off some of his creatures and exile his graveyard, but I can't find an answer to his value engine in time, and after a grueling battle, Phil finally wins the game. Game recap time. Unfortunately for Richard, I think my deck had a favorable matchup to his Voltron strategy. His commanders kept getting picked off before he could finish off anyone. Still, he was always just one haste equipment or evasion equipment away from one-shotting people. Neotic's deck didn't do much for most of the game, then suddenly went ham and stormed off, nearly snatching victory. It was a cool explosive deck and fun to watch pop off. Phil's deck was… well, it's a landfall deck. You all know what it does by now, and it does it very well. Phil played a toned down version for this recording, but even so, it managed to do a lot of really cool things, and Ashaya makes for a fun board state. As for me, I'm incredibly happy with my deck's performance. I got to show off everything I love about Tashiro, killing things while flashing back a bunch of spells for tons of value, and I even got to show off a variety of finishers, even if they didn't end up winning the game. I really couldn't ask for more. And that, friends, is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this new format, and please let me know if there's anything I can do to improve in the future. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. This video took an incredibly long time to produce, so your support is greatly appreciated. That's all for now, so until next time, friends. See ya!